Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Roy Evans of the Jericho Broadcast Networks, and I am here with Mr. Darren Reed, who is the Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development. Darren, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Roy. Glad to be here. All right. Well, thanks. So let's start off by telling the folks a little bit about what Stride Professional Development is. Yeah, absolutely. Stride uh, is a is the nation's leading uh, provider of online education in the K through 12 space. We were formerly known as K 12 Inc. and uh, are you know over two decades in the space of providing um, free virtual online education across the nation to students, no matter where they are. Um, we've since exchanged our name to Stride uh, because we're, we we've done expanded beyond the K 12 space, though though that's still very much what we do as a priority. Um, what we've also done with the Stride Professional Development Center is we've leveraged some of our expertise over the past two plus decades of supporting schools and students and educators, teachers, principals. Um, and we are trying to innovate, you know, the way professional development happens for educators. And that we're doing that through the Stride Professional Development Center. Um, gone are the days where, you know, it's face-to-face -face only PD. Um, it's episodic professional development. Um, it's professional development that's not necessarily relevant to what teachers and educators need right away. So the Professional Development Center is designed to solve that challenge with some unique and uh, innovative uh, ways of delivering content. All right, man. Well, listen, we are super excited here at the network to be engaged with you all in helping to provide this opportunity for teachers all across the country, and especially those teachers that are coming from our HBCU backgrounds, because we Absolutely. know that education was always one of the stalwarts of most HBCUs in this country. They all had teaching programs, and that's what a lot of them were founded for. So, Darren, let's talk absolutely. a little bit about those special programs that you guys have for yeah. the teacher. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Roy, you hit, you hit on the very important point. Um, you know, right now in our country, we're facing, facing probably one of the greatest challenges, you know, of our teaching core that we have in many, many years, and that, that's around this teacher shortage. You know, a lot of teachers are exiting the profession, Um um, just just based on tenure, you know, they're they're retiring and moving on, and then you have, you know, our existing teachers who are who are being taxed and stressed, you know, particularly post COVID, with, you know, increasing demands, um, challenges that they're facing in the classroom, and a host of other other uh, issues that, that they struggle with, and um, we need good teachers, and we need to support the teachers that we have. So the two things that we're doing. Um, is that we know first-year teachers, among all teachers, are among the first to leave the profession uh, within the first five years. I think they do um, at, at a 44% rate, which is just scary to think that folks are, you know, graduated, want to go in a classroom and make a difference, but, you know, feel like they need to leave within the first five years because it's so challenging. So we want to support them. Um, obviously, as a new teacher, your school that you 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 work where you work your first year, the district where you work, there will be some professional development support to assist you. But we want to go a step further. We want to help every teacher in the country get off to a strong start uh, to their first year and have some uh, stick to itiveness, you know, to help them get through that first year. So we're offering a year free um, access to the Stride Professional Development Center. It's a ever growing online database of courses that will help them in a variety of different ways. Uh, classroom management, targeted instruction, uh, and, and a host of other things. And the content will continuously grow. Again, it's just another resource that allows them to sharpen their practice, to feel like they're supported, uh, because the research says that teachers are leaving in large part because they don't feel like they get enough professional support. So we really hope that helps new teachers. So again, this is for any new teacher who just graduated in the country. All you have to do is go to our site and uh, sign on using the Teachers Win uh, uh, discount at, at, at checkout. Also, we have a, a, another campaign where during Teacher Appreciate Teacher Appreciation Week, we gifted uh, all teachers in the country, no matter where you are, six months free professional development center access. Uh, but we're doing a special thing with through you, our partnership with the B, BCSN and our, our uh, HBCU graduates, and and also the schools that you work with. We want any teacher in the country. Who, 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 you know, through our partnership um, gets access to the Professional Development Center and they get six months free using the BCSN 23 uh, passcode at, at checkout. You know, again, our goal is to support and get as many teachers on the site feeling supported, um, you know, to really help, you know, them, them succeed and have some success, not only for them, but obviously for our kids and the communities they serve, so. 
Most definitely. And Darren, listen, we are super excited again to be a part of this. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. I have my my best friend is a teacher. Absolutely. So we understand. I've worked in the school system for years. So I understand the resources that are needed. I understand why a lot of these teachers do take the time and they sit there and after going through college, they're like, you know what, let's do something different. Yeah. So we're happy to be a part of this to help you guys change that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's all you guys need to do. All you need to do is take a look and go to the link that's right below us right now and see what you're going to do. You're going to see two links on the page now, just to make sure. The top one takes you to their professional development page, homepage, that'll let you know about some of the things that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time, those folks who are HBCU alum and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the folks? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and, and um, understanding the need um, and, and of course with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU teacher graduates are just, uh, exactly what we need in our community. So I really encourage them and just glad to be doing this partnership with you all. All right. Well, folks, there you go again, Mr. Darren Reed, Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development Learning. We will be seeing you guys, and trust me, you'll be seeing more from their partnership with us as we move forward, always trying to do our best to make sure that we move forward with the community. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. I love my HBCU And boy, boy I love it, love it yeah. I love it, love it yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU yeah. And man yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. man. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab To see if my team won a lot yeah. If they lost, yeah. I'm quiet as a mouth but if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, so we have none other than the HB Drew uh, providing us his presence today as part of episode 403. So welcome to episode 403 Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast on the Black College Sports Network, the show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports. For institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-hosts, Mike Washington and Charles Bishop, filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our K2H 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that being said, before I go to y'all and ask how you're doing, man, I just seen Brother Lee Gilmore Jr. Brother Gilmore is in the building. Man, I just need to give a shout out to Brother Gilmore, who always uh, treats me well when I go by his house and go into the garage when we need a little mental uh, fortitude of taking the next step as you get worn down, brothers, at times. You know how that go. I'll get back and shout out to other folks before I do that. Charles, how are you doing? Doing well, Doc. Doing well. You're getting close to the weekend. That means it's time to pull out the golf sticks this weekend. So <laughs> enjoying this June right now. <laughs> Man, I need to give you some playing money so I can get some <laughs> extra tips out there. This weekend, because it sounds like you're feeling good. It sounds like you might bring some home for Father's Day. 
Hey, my my game gets gets pretty doggone good in the summer, so I, I I'm always excited. Once I start peaking toward the end of the summer, and then it's time to get back to football season. So <laughs> <laughs> get back to the real world. With that being said, yeah, I'm yeah. to it. Happy Father's Day to all those out there, to you, Charles. Great picture, man. Your older dollar looks just like you, that brown head, poor baby. <laughs> 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 Beautiful ladies that you have there, those daughters. Thank both you. Both of them. Uh, happy Father's Day. With that being said, happy Father's Day to you, Drew. How you doing? Uh, happy I'm Father's do- Day weekend. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine. Doing fine, Doc. Uh, this is day three of severe storms here in the oh South Georgia area. Mm. Uh, lost power before a while last night. So I'm going to warn everybody now. If I just disappear off of this podcast, Dr. Gavir, please don't take any points off my assignment. Uh, Mother Nature has called and I have to answer. I will try my best to use my cell phone if uh, if that should come. But that's assuming that the cell tower is going to go down also. Uh, perfect the way that you did it. You come at the beginning and make sure the professor knows Dean of the college understands what is taking place. When that happens, certainly life happens. No problem. You've had excellent grades thus far. You've been on time. So that's the perfect way that you get it done. So yeah. when a real emergency comes, that's not a problem. You get grace. And, problem. <laughs> and I'm going to explain how life happened today. Uh, I had an appointment this morning. So uh, got the email saying there was no power on campus uh, today. Uh so when I get on campus, of course, there, there was still no power. This was about 11 something when I get on campus. So I go right. to the gym. And while I'm in the gym, the lights come on. And Doc, I'm in the gym <laughs> maybe five minutes later. As, and I, as I walk out the gym, walk back towards my office, which is in, in another building, lightning strikes the transformer behind my office, which means now everybody else on campus has lights, but my building because the because the transformer just got struck by lightning. And obviously, you know, the crews are not going to work on repairing uh uh electricity during a lightning storm at that point in time. So I just politely said I'll be working remote for the rest of the day, and I went on ahead and went home. <laughs> I love it. Nice stuff, nice stuff. Let me jump in here, shout out some folks who keep going. Lennon Blow, Chuck Hunt, Emma Price. Edwin D. Moore, Brandon King are all in the building as we jump in at it. Shout out to those. Shout out to um, those on uh, YouTube. We'll get back and check on those as I'm saying that. Let me go to you, Charles. Uh, mm-hmm. As I say to everybody, as including you all, happy Father's Day weekend for all the fathers out there, those that leave from the front and have a father uh, like roll. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy it. Relax. Sit back. And do you? With that being said, Charles, what news is on your mind for the day? Yeah, I wanted to start off uh, today's show on a bit of a summer note. Uh, Homer Jones, uh, Texas Southern mm-hmm. great, and the first NFL player uh, to be credited with spiking the football uh, passed away today. Uh, Homer Jones, Texas Southern alum, who played seven years in the NFL and is credited with inventing the most widely used touchdown celebration, uh, the uh, spike the ball celebration. Uh, passed away today at the age of 82 years old. A little bit of background on Homer Jones. Before his NFL career, he played football and ran track at Texas Southern and was a member of the 1962 uh, U.S. Olympic track team, along with another track and football legend uh, we all know in Florida A&M, a and Dallas Cowboy wide receiver, the late bullet Bob Hayes. But Homer Jones was part of the Tigers team that went 25-17 and 17 in his four years on a team in which he moved from linebacker to fullback and finally – uh, to flank of what is now known as wide receiver. But Homer Jones, a bit of a uh, trivia, who was the first person to bring that uh, spike in the football into the NFL. It was a uh, HBC man, Texas Southern man, Homer Jones. Boy, I tell you, uh, really good to relive that. And certainly some no prayers to him and his family, but I'm glad that you uh, started the show off to recognize um, uh, another HBCU legend, HBCU great, particularly when you talk about the uh, historical uh, component that is attached to him 
uh, being accredited to with the spike of the football. Imagine that, how many folks have done that over the years if he, uh, in terms of what that looks like. That's pretty incredible. Great information. And I appreciate you opening it up from that. With that being said, A.D. Drew, what's on your mind? So black folk has fit at the spike of the football and the high five. Well, black folks sure know how to celebrate what we score in a uh, in the <laughs> athletic uh, endeavor. Yeah, we cool. We, we bring the cool with you. Yeah. Uh, let's talk NIL, Dr. Cavill. And, you know, I'm, I'm the small sure. school guru. So uh, let's talk about it on the Division Two level. As there's a potential bill that's floating through Congress, uh, student sponsored student athletes uh, have expressed some concerns with with NIL. And on the Division Two level, they want to remain classified as student athletes and not as employees. And this bill is circulating through Congress right now, hoping to make its way to President Biden's desk. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, Doctor Cavill. What could this be for HBCUs at the Division Two level if this NIL bill that is currently in the draft stage it passes? All right, the bill, which is a draft bowl, is expected to address potential relationship from schools towards athletes with NIL deals who may transfer out a a potential governing body to keep track of NIL deals and booster and booster related agreements and protecting the NCAA from lawsuits and having to allow students with NIL deals to be eligible for employee status. As HBCUs continue to be a hot topic of conversation from a branding perspective, it will be interesting to see how this letter from the Division II level, as well as the potential NIL bill, impact their way of athletic programming and athletes as, as athletes navigate the changing landscape of the business of college athletics. And this comes from HBCUsports.com, this report that I just gave. Great report. I hate to break it to these Division II students. They're not worried about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Division One, and even at the Division One level, is FBS. But you are the king. Of sure Unless you come from the SEC, eight, you don't have any eight, power. Division Two. You did it right. The other thing I will say, do you all know the two folks that are championing this bill? Did you hear the names associated with that? No, I did not. One Democratic, Manchin, and I say that softly, and the other one is a Republican, <laughs> a former coach. All don't the, tell, don't tell me Tupperville. I say be careful of, yeah, be careful of wolves. In, yeah, Tupperville, be careful Wait, of wolves. You got in clothes. You got a chance of it not passing if Tupperville has to get up and uh, actually speak on the bill. <laughs> Tupperville is not the brightest light in, like in that co congressional rule. Yeah, it'll probably die on the floor before you even make it to five signatures, man. There's folks here. But, yeah, it's a good story. Storyline. Boy, I tell you. That was so, good. so as I understand that, that the draft, uh, the Division Two athletes would rather be classified as student athletes versus employees, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the tax implications is what I, you know, heard when I heard employee because uh, you got to issue a W two if somebody becomes an employee. Yeah, but the problem is, is employee just means that you're paying taxes on money that you're getting paid for. Yeah, so you might want to get paid first. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not like people don't work to pay taxes. It's not yeah. at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not gonna make all of that money, but you just rather <laughs> not get paid at all because you worry about taxes. And you just not get no money for it right now. Make it make oh, sense. Boy. Oh boy, that's funny. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Go ahead, boy. Charles. Follow up because that's yeah. good. Well, let's <laughs> shift it over. Through. Shifting over to football, North Carolina Central, uh, they will come into the season ranked 13th in the uh, latest FCS preseason top 25, coming off a 10-win uh, campaign that included two top 25 victories and an HBCU national championship. North Carolina Central is ranked 13th in the 2023 Hero Sports FCS preseason top 25. In 2022, NCCU won its first MIAC football championship since 2016 and defeated number five Jackson State 41 34 in overtime thrill in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. The victory delivered the university the fourth HBCU national championship title, joining the company 
of those that captured that title in 1954, 2005, and 2006. So uh, North Carolina Central, they will be the odds-on favorite coming into this upcoming season. Uh, when you take a look at the MEAC and, you know, they have uh, – they project to have 12 all BA performers, including five first-team all-conference honorees. Uh, headlining that group will be senior quarterback Davius Richard, or Richard, uh, if we're not in Louisiana. So the 2022 right. <laughs> MEAC <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year and senior defensive back Khalil Baker, the 2022 MEAC Defensive Player of the Year. So North Carolina Central, they come in locked and loaded. Man, I'm glad you corrected it, like, in minutes. Today was square you did that on purpose. I know, I know. It's like, no, man, I'm just – I'm in this area. That's what the last quarterback we dealt with in this area a couple times pronounced it differently. Quick question to follow up on on this. Over and under, will anybody not – will anybody not pick North Carolina Central as the number one team in the MEAC? Oh, they, they're really, there's no question. They they come in. They will they will be picked to be the favorite. Yeah, eighty. There, there's no question. Over and under. Over and under. Is that a half? I guess half of what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Central Central's the preseason number one. It just Easy. it just takes one person. Central is the preseason number one. If they are not unanimous, we need to find the Russia judge. Uh, and, and, and it only takes one person to sip something from prior the night before to come in with something <laughs> outlandish, other than North Carolina Central being no one in the BA. Yeah, but yeah, it could happen. But so it's does, not that, proof. does that change when it goes to the national? When we do, when you see these uh, HBCU major division D one large polls, whatever, anybody not selecting North Carolina Central coming out of the boxes no more? I don't think so. I think North I Carolina think Central. So. <laughs> Should especially with Davis Richard coming stuff. back. People, yeah. people will make an argument stuff. for shout and, out to and, Joshua Sims Sim, You know, yeah. he's loving this. He's like, Oh, better not. He, yeah. he have a yeah. fit. Oh, it's, it's thing thing now, now, Doc, people will make an argument for Florida AM. Now, I, as a Florida AM homer, I don't understand that argument, but there will be people who make it <laughs> who will make an argument for you know, Florida AM. I know there are people, but it will anybody say it out loud and put now, it Now, when you put it ranking. But when you put it, when you put a pen to paper on that, it's a different question. Exactly. With that, last That's thing is quickly, we got to get in a break. We got a great interview coming up on the other side. Um, Miak announces hires of Patricia Porter Mayfield and Randy Brent. Uh, Miak continues to make significant moves in their uh, Miak office. Miak announced the return of Patricia Porter Mayfield, who will serve as the league's associate commissioner for strategic commission and the hire of Randy Brent, the conference's director of digital media and marketing. Uh, Brent has started uh, with the MEAC, and Port Mayfield's tenure will become on July 3rd. Uh, so just wanted to give an update there as they continue to move things forward. Fascinating to see what that looks like. Digital media marketing, you know I'm interested in that, and I always got to have the communication out there. So shout out to these two individuals. Let's take our first break, come back on the other side. And we'll see if we can get our guests in here to shine and give us an update. Looking forward to a great interview. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404 698 3992 or log on to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M A N G O S to 31 31 31. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. 
T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, so we have AD Drew, and we have our guest, Hall of Famer. Well, let me let me let me correct that. Multi Hall of Famer, Mr. Lynn Thompson, who was recently inducted into the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2023, was down there in Orlando. He told me, but he didn't remind me. I would have booked my tickets to get down there to celebrate. This is big. First HBCU individual celebrated in this way. Obviously, HBCU person through and through. Undergraduate Bethune Cookman. Even went over to the Masters at Clark Atlanta University. Bethune Cookman, athletic director, then later named as vice president of athletics, intercollegiate athletics, one of the first ADs, uh, particularly in the HBCU rank that went from just an athletic director that got the normal place of vice president. Uh, now working consultant with the MEAC. I know so much there, I don't want to leave a lot out, but we do the rest of the show just doing your accolades. So I just want to kind of highlight some things. 30 years of experience, one of the youngest 80s when he got into the game, went out as one of the longest standing tenures uh, as he tipped his cap. Or let me say, I should tip my cap to you in terms of service. Uh, the Thorne Cookman's programs have done some things that we hadn't seen. You know, baseball uh, team went to the fifth game in terms of their super regional, looking like there were a couple of plays, tough call, the way maybe to get into a super regional would have been the first. Obviously, softball team made it into the second round of the tournament, stuff that we hadn't quite seen, success in football, knocking on the door in basketball, success with women's basketball. Um, too many accolades to name in terms of what you're doing. Did I do it well? Did, do, did I get my check? Did I do it appropriately? You're going to come back to check, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> as long as, as, long as so, Charles, Charles, did he do it okay? It sounded like he did it all right there. He set it up well there. <laughs> 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 well, I just say it won't want no problems. I don't want no, no problems. You're good with me. I see you. You like, know, man, I what are you doing? I appreciate what you guys do, man. I follow everything you guys do. The conversations you have are on point. And I appreciate the, the storytelling uh, that you guys do. Uh, uh, you know, you really keep the hot button issues at the forefront and you tell the stories and you keep alive and you keep HBCU sports relevant. And that is so important to all of us in the industry. And I, I want to tip my hat uh, to you guys for what you do. Man, appreciate it. means so much coming here from you. Let, let me jump off and start it this way. Uh, before we backtrack a little bit and ask you how you got into the athletics, for those that may not be aware. Wow. Of it. Man, you know. What happened? When, what, I want to ask you this one first. How, how did you feel when you got the call? Or was it a letter? No, it was a call. Uh, I was sitting where I am right now. I had just returned, uh, and I split my time from uh, here in Ormond Beach at home to, I have an office in Norfolk, and um, mm -hmm. and normally it's a couple of weeks a month where I'm actually in Norfolk and then on the road whenever uh, Commissioner Steele's 
needs me to go somewhere. Uh, and I was here. And um, and I was having a pretty tough day handling some things. And I got a call yeah. from Pat Manick, who was the executive director of NACTA. And, uh, you know, and he, uh, he called me. I recognized the number from Cleveland. Uh, because of course I had spoken with the people at, at at NACTA before on a couple of different other matters. So when I saw the, the the area code and I knew that was the NACTA office, I assumed it might have been something to deal with the APR 2.0 conversation that you know we've been having with that task force or something else. But and he called me and he he, he just was talking and he had just taken over, um, you know, and and then he said, "Man, let me just cut to the chase." And he just said, I just want to be the first to let you know that we just left executive committee meeting and uh, and you unanimously uh, endorsed and selected to, to be in the class of 23 NACTA Hall of Fame. Wow. And it, it hit me because I did not even know that I had been nominated. And, uh, and he said, this was a committee of your peers nationwide who felt that your body of work merited uh, your you know, the inclusion in this class of eight people. And um, and so after that, I just sat there and uh, I was speechless. Uh, because, you know, you, you go to work and then you work. That's all you do. And uh, and so I called Sonya Fields and I said, what did you do? And she said, <laughs> what do you mean? And she had nothing to do with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so I then began to find, try to find out who did this, you know, and finally, one of my colleagues said to me, uh, who I trust and respect, said, man, look, you can't go no higher than this in the industry. If you mm. reach Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio for an athletic director is Canton, Ohio for an NFL player. Mm. You know, And so mm. I just said to God be the glory. Uh, and nobody gets Amen. into the Hall of Fame by themselves. No one. I mean, no Olympian gets on the podium by himself or herself. You don't. You can't do that, you know. And I just began to reflect on the people who who came alongside me uh, in the vision and the mission that we had, and and bought into it, and sacrificed and committed. And so, uh, having to 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 really sit back and think over thirty years how it all started. What were the seminal points and the pivotal points in my career, and uh, and all of the people who uh, who were able to really um, to 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 come alongside and provide the support, the assistance, and even the correction that I needed uh, to mm -hmm. to make sure that we were able to transform the lives of so many young people, uh, and I just owe them a debt of gratitude, and will always owe it to them. Well, as long as I can breathe, uh, and that that you know, that doc is is what it was all about. And so the last couple of days, when my family members came and uh, friends, supporters, uh, even the fam you fans came, and uh, Vaughn Wilson and Joe Bullet uh, and Marvin Green and a host of fam you friends Boys. came over. Yeah, it was amazing, uh, and it was kind of overwhelming. It really was. Wow. Beautiful thing. Before I get these two gentlemen in to ask some follow-up questions, because I know they're chomping a bit, I did want to take a liberty and ask one more and go back mm -hmm. uh, as we kind of culminated with the call um, as things propel as you take the next chapter. How did you start? How did you get in that? That's a, that's a, that's a question. Uh, it, it had to be uh, providence, so, so to speak. Um, as you know, I was a I was a football player. Uh, went to school, played football, signed a uh, had a lot of offers. Uh, was talked into staying home by Charles Wesley Moore, who's a football coach at Bethune Cookman. I I really wanted to go to Air Force Academy. I had an appointment at Air Force to play football. My mother said mm -hmm. no because she had two of her brothers who were wounded veterans, one in Vietnam, one in the Korean conflict, and she said absolutely not. Mm. Uh, and uh, and so I never thought growing up by at the Thurl Cookman right down the street, literally two minutes from the campus where we would walk. I never even considered going there. And uh, and Coach Moore made a home visit. 
and he convinced my parents and I that how bad he wanted me to play there. And my father was the funeral director, and he said, how else will your father be able to see you play on Saturday? As a black funeral director, uh, he can't go on Saturdays anywhere else to see you play. You know, he's going to be, um, you know, our people get buried on Saturdays. Y'all know that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, and I decided, I uh, uh, had offers to go to FAMU and other schools. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I had 17 offers to, to co play college football. And I decided to go to the film company. But uh, having done that, um, I uh, signed uh, out of uh, college in 1979, uh, played uh, with the Packers a year as a punter. They kept me on injury reserve the whole year. I hurt my leg uh, late in training camp, had a torn hamstring. And uh, once I got healthy, three quarters of the year, they released me. Came back home um, and decided to go to graduate school. I was in Atlanta. Uh, mm -hmm. working uh, in graduate school, took an internship at PBS, Public Broadcast System, uh, nice. modeling and acting, putting my way through school, uh, and doing uh, reporting. I was a reporter on Georgia football, uh, college football in Georgia was the name of the show, and I was a feature reporter, and I was writing for Pledge Drive, and, and then became a reporter on a TV show called Primetime, and I began to write, do commercials and things like that. And so I understood uh, the communication industry, media and things like that, performing arts. Uh, and then my father got ill. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I moved back home temporarily. And Dr. Oswald Bronson, the president of Bethune Cookman, asked me would I take a part-time job mm -hmm. as the executive director of the Athletic Foundation uh, while I was still there with my father. And I, I said, the only way I would take it would be, uh, you know, as a part-time executive. And I, because I was going to move back to, I had a house in Atlanta that was leasing. And uh, I stayed there for a year and a half and uh, my father uh, got better. And then one day the doctor, Bronson called me in his office and said, I need you to do me a favor. I really thought he needed a ride somewhere. So I ran outside. <laughs> you know how somebody asks who you respect, asks you, I need you to do me a favor. So I ran outside and cleaned out my car. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was junky and everything. And they, I came back in the office, and then he said, I need you to do me a huge favor. And I said, what is it? I need you to become my athletic director. My mother, who was with the National Alumni Association, said, don't do it. My brother said, don't do it. Um, <laughs> a lot of other people said, don't do it. Well, the late Simon McLaren, uh, who I trusted, said, you have to do it. One of my other close friends who was the former SID said, you're the only person that we feel can do it. And so I prayed on it. And I decided to do it. And I never, I had to go back to Atlanta and close out all of my stuff, move my stuff back. And um, that became my life ministry. And that's what I wow. did, but I began to merge all of the things that I learned in the performing arts and the media, because athletics is simply the performing arts. Think about it. The football yep. field, the field of competition is the stage. You got lights, right? The characters, the performers mm -hmm. are the student athletes. The coaches are the directors. The playbook is the script. The audience is the audience. <laughs> You know, and uh, when when you go off script, you improv. It's improvisation. And so all of those elements are there. And so I just felt that, that we could utilize every aspect of the program to build upon that. And that's what we did. Mm. Man, beautiful. You know I'm going to mess with you because we thought Cat Eye Network was one of the best ones out there. Now you're in this thematic, dark picture as we do this interview. Um, so, yeah, you're artistic by nature. I know there's yeah. a lot of purpose to that and that's, in that's regards what to do. what they're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the last thing before we do this uh -huh. first break, come back on the other side, and we'll get questions from these two gentlemen. Um, I just want to acknowledge, I've always had this desire to create a degree that was similar to a um, 
an artistic degree that you talk about in terms of these playlists that you see, performance art degree, but one that was performance athletics. Mm -hmm. um, and so I might need to talk to you with you off record to see if I can finally bring that to life as you just found a way to dis okay. describe what I was thinking about over that time. Let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side. We'll get questions from Charles and AD because I'm sure they're biting it to bits to uh, make sure that they get a question in. And so let's take this first break uh, with this interview, second break of the show. We'll come back on the other side. Uh, and give you more uh, Hall of Famer, Lynn Thompson. No. No. I want him. Ooh, I like him. <laughs> Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get it down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the time. Stride K-12 powered schools are ready to put over 20 years of being a leader in online education to work for you. Dive into curriculum design for the online classroom. Team up with state certified teachers nice. trained in virtual instruction. Take control of your child's education journey. Discover the power of personalized learning with a leader experienced in preparing kids for a future they can be excited about. Take charge. Stride K-12. Enroll now for the fall. From the analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yesa, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We have Charles Bishop, Eddie Drew, and our Hall of Famer, Lynn Thompson. Shout out to Christopher Dukes, Mary305, checking us out on YouTube. We'll get a shout out to those checking us out on Facebook. But with that being said, uh, Charles, jump in here and ask your question. Yeah, I, I, and I, I probably can go in a thousand different directions, but uh, I'm a person who loves uh, the art of storytelling in regards to documentaries. And, and I definitely wanted to ask you about Kingfish, the story of Kenny Washington. I'm fascinated by his story. And uh, I, how did you come to this project? Yeah, look, I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked me that because uh, let me tell you how that happened. Uh, there's a young lady by the name of Jasmine Austin. And Jasmine Austin became a, a graduate assistant at Bethune-Cookman. Jasmine was um, the, the, the one person that we that took us over the top with the Cat Eye Network. Uh, she is a, a, a guru in terms of graphics, a graphic mm. designer. Uh, and she came to us and, uh, at, and was stolen away from us by Oregon, University of Oregon. Wow. And she worked directly with Oregon and Mario Cristobal there. Uh, and uh, before wow. she even finished her master's degree at Bethune, she worked there for a year and a half in the graphics department for football. And she felt, uh, she called us back and said, I got to come back home because while I'm doing all this wonderful graphic stuff, I cannot impact any young people. I'm just stuck in the studio designing graphics all day long, but I don't get a chance to interact with people. And so she came back. And, uh, and she is the one that we give a lot of credit to and Brian Harvey to, for, for really uh, and letting, I just told her the dream. And so 
Uh, once she finished, uh, she left and created a company called The Black Original. And uh, The Black Originals is an agency now. Uh, she and her fiance, Sam Ho, uh, created this company. And they've got Fortune 500 organ uh, companies that really have hired them to do a lot of messaging and storytelling. And so Jasmine mm -hmm. called me because we did a lot of the a trilogy of of, of of things on Mary McLeod Bethune that I wrote and produced uh, and, and, and a lot of other things for the institution and for the MEAC that we had done. And so Jasmine uh, and Sam and the Black Originals uh, were hired to by the Los Angeles Rams to do uh, this documentary short film on Kenny Kingfish Washington. And so mm. they called me and said, uh, Mr. T, that's what they call Mr. T, we need you to write it for us. And mm. so uh, at the time I got asked, I'd love to do it. I, I wrote it and then uh, I uh, I narrated it. And what we did was a, a sample track of narration because they were they wanted to get a couple of big time West Coast narrators to do it. But when they heard the narration, the sample track, they said, we love this. We want to keep this. And uh, the research that we've done, and we partnered with uh, a couple of other folks, uh, a group out of Charlotte by the name of Lloyd Visuals, uh, and they were just amazing young brothers to work with. Uh, one of them happens to be an alpha. God bless him, uh, Doc. You know, <laughs> y'all, you know, that's all right. Y'all, we look up sometimes. You know what I'm saying. But, uh <laughs> But it was a brilliant team of storytellers. And the dude, we did the research on Kenny Washington. And if anybody knows that story, Kenny Washington would have, in any time, would have been the number one draft choice in, in the NFL right. draft. But when he came out, he would have won the Heisman Trophy. He was the quarterback for the UCLA Bruins. And in the backfield was Jackie Robinson. And the tight end was Woody Strode. Mm -hmm. But none of those guys could play pro football. And so he played for the Pacific Coast uh, Football League, and they were all making more, more money than any NFL player at the time. And so wow. we had to wait six years before the NFL would even con uh, consider uh, black players. And so Bob Pope, the Bob Pope, uh, was able to help them when the Cleveland Rams moved to Los Angeles. There was uh, a city ordinance because they renovated the, the Coliseum in the middle of the black community. And there was a city ordinance that said that any organization, any workforce, anybody that leased the Coliseum had to have a diversified workforce. And that included the LA Rams. So the black press made them use that. And they said, well, who are we going to get? And they said, well, you got Kenny Washington. And so they signed Kenny Washington. And the rest is history. And that was the first Black, black player that, and that was the first semblance of a pro franchise permeating a, commu a community of color in terms of marketing and everything else, and it still holds true to this day. The Rams are entrenched in the black community in Compton and Watts and all those other areas of Los Angeles simply because of that connection with Kenny Washington. Wow. Wow. Amazing. That's the way. He was appreciate, big. Appreciate you sharing that great question, Charles. Get that out there. Eddie, mm -hmm. Drew? All right, Dr. Thompson. I'm going to come with a question. Uh, straight liquor, no chase on this question. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a rattler. So I need you to tell me about the other side of the rivalry with Florida A&M. Obviously, I know the Florida A&M side. Tell us about the Bethune side of and, and specifically your perspective as the athletic director in this friendly rivalry between these two institutions. Okay. Uh, let me tell you this, A.D. Um, folks from around the country ask me so many times, uh, how is it that Bethune and fam, you are able to uh, do business all the time? Mm -hmm. uh, and and really, and you know this, be, being a rattler, there's in a you know the families are so intertwined. Yes. Uh, even in my own family, going back generations, this is how it was. <clears throat> all, all the women in my family, 
they sent the women to Dr. Bethune, but they sent the <laughs> men to Jake Gaither. Mm. <laughs> and that's how it was. Interesting. They that's sent true. the women to Dr. Bethune, but the men to Jake Gaither. Okay. Got it. And and to this day, there are generations of families who are intertwined. So much so that uh, which is why Joe Joe Bullock, the voice of the Marching One Hundred, okay. Who, who who can can talk more noise about Bethune Cookman than anybody? And AD, you know this. You've heard him at halftime just vilify Bethune Cookman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. But it's out of love, you know. And he and I have been friends for twenty five years. You know, Vaughn Wilson's father, who was the AD at FAMU, is a was a Bethune graduate. You know, and so there. And here's the deal. They told me that for 364 days of the year, I'm one of the most beloved non famu people on the earth. That's what they told me. Okay, now they say that one day in November, they hate my guts for about six hours. <laughs> but then after the game, what we do is we go and tailgate again, and then we count the money. <laughs> because mm -hmm. we count the money and we make some serious money, you know. Uh, while there are other classics that may draw some people, more people, nobody else was netting the revenue that we net from the Florida Classic. And so it is a business partnership that we said that Jake Gaither and Mary McLeod Bethune got together and had a baby called the Florida Classic. Mm, there it is. I love it. And that Great describes story. the relationship. Wow. Perfect. Quick one before we take this next break. Come mm -hmm. back on the other side. Man, we do this all day. We got to make sure we get this in and bring you back. because I see more questions on people's tongue. Quickly, have you, with the relationship you had with Clark Atlanta University, have you scheduled them in athletics during your time as AD? We tried, though. We oh. tried. And, uh, we we just they didn't want to play. Okay, we, we have tried. <laughs> it's all on them. We, and we also and, and let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Reggie Thomas, who was uh who was a senior associate uh, athletic director, was a was an All American at Clark and now. And, and Reggie said, "Man, look, man. All right, you an alum. I'm an alum. Let me cut the deal." So we even offered them. I was, I mean, Reggie made me up the ante by $25,000. And they still said, I said, Reggie, what else? He said, yeah, they, 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 boss, they, ain't nothing else they like you. that. I tried to get them to come over here to play TSU, and they were like, right. no, we're good. This, this, no, we're not coming. I said, well, you know, we're going to pay this. Oh, that's great money, but no, we're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, but, hey, but that's, that's, that's okay. Uh, and, and, uh, but I have uh, I'm I'm doing some things. Uh, let me tell you what we did do with Clark Atlanta this year with the MEAC. Uh, and a friend of mine who was a Clark Atlanta graduate and teaches a class there, uh, we utilized uh -huh. Clark Atlanta School of Business and, and Sports Management to do some research for the MEAC, uh, market research, and they presented a case study to us that uh, that that we have begun to utilize in terms of market analysis and things like that. And it was unbelievable stuff. Thank you. Great business school. And Marquisa yeah. Henderson is uh is, is Dr. Marquisa Henderson has left Agnes Scott College and, and now is heading up the the sports management uh curriculum there. And I was talking to her two days ago in Orlando and uh they're doing some wonderful things that we need to plug you in with her. Certainly. What, what yeah, I, I, I can make sure that happens. I the end, but I'd love to get and do some partnership in terms of sport management. Oh program. absolutely absolutely that that is terrific sense. business school yeah um only d2 program this r2 in terms of the academic status so their relationship there when you right. said me back in clark atlanta i got a little nervous stick with us we, i don't need anybody in trouble we'll take that we'll come right back after this break we won't leave it like it is you know, people be like come here, what you doing we'll be right back after this last break. from novice to aficionado Find yourself here. High quality, 
cigars, plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and sir. pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Lil with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Charles A.D. and a Hall of Famer, Lynn Thompson, in here just giving us a rich history. Uh, let's get into it. This past Tuesday, we released on this show the top six HBCU Division I AD slash VPs of athletics rankings. Um, you've heard the scene of list. We want to get in, in terms of who you want in and out of the list because we don't want you to get in trouble with all the folks that you train and they're going to be calling you, asking you why you didn't say they should have been on the list. But I wanted to ask you in terms of your expertise on a serious note, these are the criteria we use. Are any of these that should be taken off? Or is there something that I didn't consider that should be added on is the question I want to get you. So one was new revenue generation, top four sports championships. We looked at football, men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball independently. But then we also looked at all sports to look at the health of a total program in terms of all sports conference finish. Uh, did you finish at the top, top third of your conference? Postseason not only in terms of making it to postseason, but how did you perform in postseason? New okay. facility development. Six, those are the top five. Six was communication plus social media. So it could be both or in the, in, independent of either one of those. Seven was innovation. What are you doing new strategy? Plus what is your influence? Um, right. And eight was this miscellaneous type of category. Of those categories, any of them weighted too much, or is, is there anything we should have added in your consideration when we look at top six? Well, I, 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 think I, I want to add uh, about miscellaneous because one of the one of the the things that I did not see, uh, but I can see that it does impact uh, almost every other column. There would be uh, APR. You know, yeah. uh, and and that could that could fall under miscellaneous, but it, it has the ability to to impact number one. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, championships, <laughs> postseason, <Yep. laughs> and yep. everything else. Uh, and uh, and while while there are a lot of people who who think that APR is solely a function of athletics, they are sadly mistaken. As, mm. as you all know, and, mm. and you see in the academy, uh, you know, there are so many factors that affect APR. We can talk about that down the road. But I think you you kind of nailed everything uh, here 
and those are those are very good uh, categories uh, to 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 really capture what could be, uh, I guess, categorized as comprehensive success. You know, and because Perfect. that 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 is what you that is what you look for. An athletic director um, or or an executive, um, you know, at the executive table, that is what they are looking for. They are looking for comprehensive success on an annual basis. Uh, uh, we're going to factor in at the end of the year in terms of the drive to win a championship and the ability to be relevant and to uh, to drive revenue for the institution. You know, uh, in this era where nobody turns a profit, and let's be real about that, nobody turns a profit hardly. Um, you you want to be in a in a position that nobody is is having a huge drain on the bottom line for an institution either, because it depends on which economic model you're looking at. Uh, you want to make sure that you are at least driving revenue and getting credit for other segments of the institution for generating revenue external to athletics. Because some some CFOs will 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 see a huge benefit that the institution is receiving as a result of athletics, but will not ever open their mouth to say we derive this economic benefit because y'all won the celebration mm. bowl or you did this, you know. For instance, um, admissions, uh, what we call um, general student aid revenue, that all of a sudden you get a 46% increase in enrollment applications and, and because you won the celebration bowl and now you don't have enough rooms on campus to, to, mm -hmm. to uh, you know, to to satisfy the new student enrollment figures. And when you survey everybody, they say, "Oh, we decided we're coming there because we saw that great win in the celebration bowl. We saw the team, we saw the band, we saw everything else." And I'm from South Dakota, and I I'm a black kid from South Dakota, and I saw so and so play, and I fell in love with your school, and we. I come want, I want some of that. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and when you survey them and find out why did you come, and, and there are firms that provide that data. And I think I told you a little earlier, uh, we I know at the MEAC, we're getting that data. And so we know where that, we yeah. know how those decisions are made. And we know what the MEAC teams are doing and how the success, is, when it's generated, we know what the benefit is to the general institution. So I think these are great these are great milestones that factor into comprehensive success. Mm. And that was surprising to see some of the yeah. some of the teams and, and how they and, and, and even the ADs and how how they were ranked based on the success, nice. uh based on those. Mm -hmm. mm. Now well, we the, question some folks is, that were interested the question is, is see, I'm out of the game now. I'm out of the What's game. The so <laughs> if they got agents, if they got agents. They're gonna take <laughs> Dr. Cavill's. They're gonna take Dr. Cavill's listing in to the negotiation room to get an extension or a bump. Okay, <laughs> that's what they're gonna do. That was the first thing yeah. I thought about. I would go in with that day like this look at this. No, all, all I need is one percent. All I need is one. Hell, I don't know. But but you just. I mean, that's you true. don't. And I did run the numbers back. Say what? There you go. I did run the numbers back, Lynn, uh, over your 30 years, and no wonder you're a Hall of Famer. You kept coming up first several times, ran the data across those subsets over the years. So I'm just saying, uh, even though you retired now from that position doing other things, uh, you, you did pretty well for yourself. Well, Let me well, jump over here. <laughs> go ahead. You know what? Let me tell you this. Uh, the, the key, today's athletic director, in order for this to work, what you have to do is you have to be at the table at your institution mm -hmm. to affect broad-based buy-in and participation on the campus level. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that. From your yeah. registrar's office to your to your office of admissions, mm -hmm. and, and you gotta all the stakeholders, because 
APR, transport portal, and everything else, do you realize that somebody in residential life can cause Kenyatta Cavill to transfer to Texas? And you know nothing about it because somebody in residential life made him so mad that he said, forget it, I'm gone. Yeah, and you have yeah. done everything else that you could. And then also, you could say that Kenyatta Cavill wanted to play at Alpha at Bethune Cookman. And his coach said that I ain't letting nobody play, but his he was a legacy. I'm serious. And yeah. they said nobody could play. And yeah. he wanted to be an alpha so bad that he was forced to leave. Yeah. And yeah. the way to keep APR in place is to, to really embed these student athletes in student leadership roles on your campus where there's value to them that they cannot leave because if I'm leaving a a valued leadership role on my campus that is going to be so Im impactful in my life that I'm I'm a big fish on my campus, not only because I play ball, but I my voice matters, you know, on the on the executive level. So so when I lead students, I'm leading them in a boardroom as, as well as leading them on through the tunnel onto the field. That's yeah. what really matters. That's interesting. Oh, go ahead, Charles. Well, I, I wanted to follow up on that point because, uh, I, 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 and, I, and I think for a lot of fans, uh, they, they get frustrated with uh, athletes going to the uh, to the transfer portal and things of that nature. But uh, are, are you saying that um, a way to sort of stem the tide, if you will, of, of athletes uh, leaving from one university to the uh, to go to another opportunity is to for them to not be segregated? from sort of the general population of the university. Absolutely. Absolutely. We had, we've had it with Bethune Cookman. We've had a middle linebacker by the name of Dietrich Strawn, who was the SGA president. We've had former student athletes who were Miss Bethune Cookman University. How could you leave that? Mm. You know? I mean, think about right. it. How could you leave that when, when you're going down in history? You know, as you know, it's, it's just it's, you can't leave that because mm -hmm. it means too much in the resume of your life. Uh, you know, and, and so that that's the key to to really ingraining them in the fabric of the university. That's the benefit that that schools like ours have. Mm. You know, so that when when they come back to homecoming, everybody knows who they were. Where they got access to Dr. Cavill or Charles Bishop, they can come to your house and they can bring their families there and say, "Here we are." You know, if you remember this, and you can you can talk about instances, milestone moments with them, rather than them coming back and just pointing to a building and nobody knew who they were. And remember this, and I say this to every recruit: you have the opportunity to impact this university as much as it will have the opportunity to impact you. You know, and that's the key. That, that university will change your life, but we want you to also etch your name in the annals of the history books of this university in more ways than one. Forget the record books. You know, forget that because they're going to put them on the shelf. We want you to write your name in the hearts and the minds of the people who touched your life. That's wow. the difference. Sure that's thing. what we can do at our institution. And that's what the parents send them to us to do. But it's the it's the it's it's Raekwon and Bernice in the beauty shop and the barber shop who don't know the difference, who convinced them otherwise. Right. Sure. Great point. Drew, uh wanted to allow you. I know you had a question you want to get in here as well. So as we come to a close, go ahead and ask uh, that question. And uh, unfortunately, uh, told you at the beginning of the show, my in, things were bad in my neighborhood, so I lost my uh, internet at the house. So I'm on my cell phone. So I missed the uh, I missed you guys' closing uh, when you were talking about the uh, athletic director. But I did want to ask you this, uh, Dr. Thompson. You were a I think a fairly successful athletic director during your tenure there at Bethune Cookman, especially over the last 10 years. I mean, we saw success with your baseball program. I believe they won like 14 BAC titles in a row. Uh, you had won 
uh, basketball, or both on the men's and the women's side as you uh, walk it out the door. Softball had won. Football was very competitive. So I, I ask you this, uh, Lynn. You heard Dr. Gavir get a diff- those different criteria uh, for for those athletic directors. Which of those do you think, number one, that you embodied when you were an athletic director? Which of those that you think you probably were more successful with your strengths? And uh, which of those criteria do you think, I wish I would have gotten this better when I was sitting in that chair? That's a great question. Uh, and that's a tough yeah. question, too. Um, here's the deal for me. Um, Dr. Bronson told me this. He said, um, and, and I'll close on this. I, I said this, and I wrote this in my bio for NACTA. All my, all my years of going around the country and I looked at institutions, I found that I don't care if it's Texas Southern, FAMU, UCLA, colleges and universities at the end of the day are built out of two things, buildings and people. I don't care how big they are, how small they are. They're comprised of two things, buildings and people. I told Dr. Bronson that, and he said, Glenn, you're right. He said, I may not have the money to build you buildings, but I can get you the money to get some people. Mm. And so I built a staff of people and staff consistency is what I was able to build at Bethune-Cookman. And the the people who were able to impact the lives of these kids and build our programs up is what kept us going. Now, we ain't have no facility. (laughs) Dr. Bill, you seen them. We ain't have no facility, you know? And that was the one thing I wish that we could have had. But now we built some great interlocal of agreements with the city of Daytona Beach to utilize city facilities and share them, which uh, allowed us to take advantage of that. But if we would have been in a position to have, uh, you know, the the Lawson Center or, or even or even Bragg Stadium, you know, uh, we would have been able to really do some great things. So the, the one of the regrets that I have is that we we were so locked into space that we could not uh, grow and grow our own facility. But we were able to grow with people and build uh, our program. And I was able to grow so much so that now we've got ADs and administrators all over the country who came out of our shop and are doing some remarkable things. And along the way, we won a ton of championships, and we graduated some great kids, put some kids in the pros, and now uh, our model is being duplicated the same way. No doubt, great it's answer. been a great, great opportunity uh, to have you on the show. Join us again, obviously. Um, last time we spoke with you in the announcement, uh, in terms of Bethune Cookman becoming the 12th member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Now we bring you back as you, you are Hall of Fame, uh, National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics, NACTA. Uh, and we just wanted to thank you for your time. We also wanted to thank you for what you've done for not only Bethune Cookman, the HBCU, the MEAC, therefore the SWAC. Uh, SIAC and CIAA in terms of leading from in front in so many different ways. So we want to make sure we acknowledge that. And thank you for giving us your valuable time on the show. Hey, Dr. Gaville, I want to say one thing. We we must have sure. done a good show because the esteemed and uh, highly acclaimed Dr. Caray Banks just sent me a text said, great show. And that is <laughs> <laughs> So we want to shout My him base, out, right? Dr. Banks. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. He was a great, great host while I was there, along with yourself, but particular uh, Dr. Banks. He made sure I was good in so many different ways when I was up in MEAC uh, for the MEAC men's and women's basketball tournament. And with that, I'll be back. I'll say that uh, in terms of what that looks like. 
want to say thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Nyanko Ville, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Hope you enjoyed our Hall of Famer, our guest, Ian Thompson. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Ville's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop, A.D. Drew, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. We will look forward to you next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, B-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-H-C-A-V-I-L, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1, Facebook. I mean, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as you know, is Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. AD? Lecture. Say it with me, Lynn Thompson. Dismissed. Dismissed.